Well, hello. Um, sorry if my voice sounds quiet. It's this mic. I'm not sure how to uh, get in any louder. But um, I'm gonna try talking because I've been told that just music is boring. So, ah, uh, I honestly don't give a shit about the ranked anymore. I used to, but um, go to that. I mean, I probably would have gotten to high terror if fucking um, Empress Children and Death Guard didn't exist, but it is what it is, so I can just put practice from now on. I have nothing to prove, but I'm gonna be showing Arrested Missile games. Well, more specifically, I'm gonna be showing um, a certain type of playstyle. This is the deck. Uh, your physics teacher actually. Um, made this deck. I mean, I've made um, changes to it, obviously. Quite a few from the time I had it, but I was inspired by him to create this deck because I thought it was actually pretty cool. And it's a one-shot deck. So, you get um, about, I think, five cards in your hand, and when you reach nine energy, you can um, do a combo that does 30 damage, and it's insane. It works pretty well on some Warlords, but against Warlords like Mortarion, that just give you poison with bugs. God, I hate all of the Death Guard anyway, to be honest. Then I'm gonna show some games in my battle log. Um, they're friendly games, because what does it matter? And this will be the first one. Honestly, I found that friendly games can actually be very difficult. I would play ranked, but like, as I said, I have nothing to prove anymore. And like, it's impossible with these new factions. No mercy. So I already had um this guy in my hand, which is great. He's a part of the combo. If you don't know, you need him, Paragon Spears, two uh, orders from Terror. And one, um, oh, I forgot what it was called. The energy refill card. Pools of Terror, him. Yeah. And loads of these cards are great. Like the one energy draw card, because you need to shuffle cards throughout your deck to get um, the important cards. I honestly didn't expect to win this first matchup. Because I hate Raven Guard. It's just something about them. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the fact that their mission is really easy. Or the fact that their cards and their mission and sentence is just really powerful. But I wasn't expecting to actually get very far. But I managed to beat them. <laughs> Gathering Intelligence is actually a decent card. I would put it in these types of decks, honestly. I wish um, Lecticio Divinatus, I think it's called. I wish that was still a card that you could use. I had it when um, it wasn't in Legacy only. But Gathering Intelligence is worth putting in your deck, to be honest. I mean, these types of decks, not like other decks. It's just a waste of energy. Like, 4 energy to draw 2 cards is not good. But with um, a one-shot deck where you need to like draw as many cards as possible, it's well worth having. Any flank card is also pretty good. Because obviously you need to buy yourself time to get all the cards. I managed to get Paragon Spear from Command Bridge. It's kind of rare, to be honest, getting Paragon Spear because of the amount of tactics this type of deck already has. But when you get it, it's really nice. Oh, sorry. Now this was very interesting. He used, um, you'll use it again, so I don't need to look. This, returning it. And I think what the idea was is, um, I think he has a Primark transformation, which requires him to destroy stuff. I honestly don't know, but um, interesting trick. yeah, an interesting trick. Other than that, he can use his ability to get stealth off of those as well, which 
which was really annoying later on when he starts doing it. Fishai La is also a card you should have in all of your decks. I mean, not this one. I mean, when you have Hunting Eagles twice, you don't really need it. The problem with having, like, um, Vishailar and, like, good troops in these types of decks is that you, um, don't need many troops. Having a troop is, like, a waste of space in your deck because you're trying to get, like, these specific cards. And having more cards that aren't in your combo just means you're more likely to draw those instead of the cards you need to finish off your opponent. So, yeah, just limited amount of troops, just all flank ones, and it's great. And also, this um, right here proves why you need anti-stun when there's a Tiska. I have one of them in this deck. I used to have two, but I think it was a waste of space. But if I didn't have ones as a Tiska here, I would have probably lost the game. And I just do this to get free cog. Don't want to be taking damage now that he has sneak attack. And this is when he starts doing it. I'm not sure if, like, I really don't know what this playstyle is, to be honest. It's kind of weird. I've never seen it before. to get rid of both of those. Nothing else to do that turn. I can't use Gathering Intelligence because I have way too many cards in my hand. Yeah, I think this was what it was to, to get to. This. That's why you did that. I'm not sure though. I know nothing about Raven Guard. I've never played them. put both of these in play to create space in my hand because I don't want lightning blow to um, be removed because you will always draw a card before your lightning blow comes into your hand and you need lightning blow for your combo it was poor troop placement to be honest I shouldn't have put them together I should have put them on either side but I wasn't thinking I was panicking to be honest he was doing a lot of damage Decide to stun him to save myself some damage. And the survivor doesn't help him because I'm, yeah, I get all of terror right here. And now you get to see the combo. This is what it is if you haven't seen it before. It's beautiful right here. Yeah, it's probably infuriating for the other guy. But this is actually a really fun thing to do. I mean, it's, it's kind of overpowered, but it's not. Like, you have to wait a while before you can get it. And then another. And then another order of terror. And he's finished, and I have five damage to spare as well. I could have done it again if I needed to. Yeah, just like that. It's, it's a great... Um, great way to just finish games honestly it's not that good in high well it would never get into high terror not really it's not that good in ranked um because you just get rushed everybody loves to play aggro for some reason like the amount of damage you take because this guy only has 30 health it's not a lot and it takes a long time to get those cards it just wouldn't work in um like 3500 above but it's it's fun in practice games and stuff Here's another one. I'll show this. This is against um, Orphans of War. Okay. I don't like that warlord, to be honest. I think he's a pretty bad Orphan of War. The Emperor of Mankind. Yeah, it's just a bad ability. To be honest, um, 
uh, Narat, Kyrene, I think that's his name. He used to be really good, and then they just nerfed his ability into the ground. He's fucking useless now. The only um, good offense of War Warlord, I think, is um, that other one. That one that um, has rage. Plus one attack every time. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know his name. The World Eaters one. But yeah, Orphans of War still have really strong troops. Especially their legendaries. It's kind of insane. That 1 7 energy trip that was nerfed. That's still fucking overpowered even after the nerf. It's pretty much impossible to get it off the board. Unless you have like troop removal. Yeah, and cards like this are actually like really strong. It's great to have these. Plus it has stealth. Yeah, this faction just has all around good cards and their mission is easy, to be honest, considering that you have cards like this, two energy stealth. And you only need to do it three times. Luckily it's not like an overpowered mission, it's actually a pretty good one to be honest as far as balancing goes. Yeah, I get Paragon Spear here, which is very good. If you get Paragon Spear early, as like any Custodes like type of um, deck, it's great. You're gonna have a very big advantage with that, and especially if your Warlord has First Strike. the mission and get like the troop for the exact energy cost like six energy you put it in the bottom. it can be really good like seeing as how the mission thing to put a troop in your hand is zero energy like right there he's probably gonna put another one in play i don't remember what happens but yeah like that it's just a great mission to be honest I wish Night Lords had a useful mission, like that would be nice seeing as I main them, but the developers don't really give a shit do they? I decide to like not take the damage in exchange for sacrificing the troop. I mean, it's great to have the troop on the board, sure, it's something to deal with, but it's only 5 health. And late game can probably easily be dealt with, and I don't want to take that much damage. And again, this is the reason why you should have anti-stun for these types of decks. Because now I can deal with this. If I, if I didn't have anti-stun, he probably would have beat me next turn, considering that's... Um, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 7, 7 damage on the board. Can't do maths, but... Oh. I'm just realising now that these are both troops from his mission. They do that loads, to be honest. Surprising how much the mission actually helps these players. Because you'd think, like, they'd use all fleets of war troops more, seeing as how they're fucking powerful, but no. Metalis is always worth having twice in any deck. It's just very um, useful, especially for precog. I also have Ruinous Claim to make all troops have one health. Oh, yeah, it's done here. He's finished even with Survivor. And then you just do uh, Orders of Terror again and he's finished. It's a great. Um, they never expect it either, to be honest. Like, I don't think anyone who really plays against this, like, knows what they're going against, like, 
maybe some players know that it's like a one hit deck when you start using um, cards to cycle but the majority of them like have no idea and I've got one more game against Narat okay it's interesting how people still play him even though uh, he was nerfed I don't think he's useful in the slightest to be honest but do what you want Narat has some of the best voice lines to be honest. I really like his um, Give Me Your Tears and Blood. That one's a great voice line. I don't know who has the best voice lines to be honest. Sevatar has some great ones like You're Good, I'm Better. That's, like, people get very salty over that one. And I just don't care. If you get salty, you just say that. Yeah, again, Orphans of War have like an abundance of stealth cards. They have loads. I like the faction, to be honest. I used to play in the Rat Kyrene. It was one of my main decks when he was good. Now I don't really play Orphans of War, but the stealth cards are great, very useful. Yep, and he's got his mission instantly. I guess the problem with going against Orphans of War, as um, this Warlord especially, or any Custodians really, is that they're always going to get your mission because you don't want the troops in play on a normal Custodes deck because it has Sentinel, I think that's what it's called, you can't draw cards and on this deck because I just don't have troops, it's a one hit deck, I don't need them. Also I hate this card so much, like when I played Orphans of War I loved it but going against it I just think it's so annoying, like the fact that it has sneak attack and spawns another one, it's just a pain in the ass to deal with, especially even when it's already in play. Because it's kind of hard, it has free health. This made me panic. Obviously because giving drop pods would mean that I wouldn't be able to get free cogs, so I had to stun it. Well, not stun it, sabotage it. Don't want it giving drop pods to uh, his troops from now on. I should have attacked before doing Yeah, it was a mistake, I wasn't thinking. I should have attacked before doing it, but it doesn't matter, it's only two health. This was... I didn't know he could do this. I thought that was really cool. It was kind of smart to be honest, because he denied me sort of um, precognition easily, and he gave himself one of my cards. I mean, fortunately for me, my deck doesn't have cards that would be useful for him, not really. So I'm pretty safe from like card stealing. Even if I were to go against the Fowls and Sons, I think I'd be pretty safe. Oh, unless they get um Pertinatural Skill over and over again. That would be scary. I did that once with the Fowls and Sons. You can just use it again and again and never like um, take damage. At this point, there's not much he can do. He needs to stop putting um, troops in play that I can get precog from. Like, the stealth is alright, but um, these types of troops, he shouldn't put them in play because I'm just going to use them for precog. If you're ever going against a Rast in the Sal, don't put in play troops that have low health like that. Because he's just going to use them to farm precog. And he's just going to buy time for himself before he can finish you. Yeah, war troops are great because I can't use my ability on them. So space wolves are the exception, I guess. 
Luckily, I have uh, Auric Mortalis that I use after this with my Lightning Blow. And I wipe his entire board basically, almost at least. I decided to take the damage here to get rid of his front line. Because uh, I have my combo in my hand, obviously, I can finish him next turn. And now, I was praying right here that he didn't put in play a front line. And he didn't, so I was safe from it. And I get to finish him next turn. It's always really satisfying when you get to do this. First, Everything you get yeah, <laughs> emote. Then first, what you do is lightning bow. It's like a routine. You do it so many times that like it's stuck in your head. Do halls of terror first, and then start the attack, and then he's fucked. I mean, halfway through, when you use the first orders of from terror, they realize what you're doing, and they just accept their fate. Yeah, like right here, you probably knew what I was doing. God, it's such a powerful combo, to be honest. It's not overpowered though, because it's hard to get all of these cards. And if you run, you can run Naras and Nassau down pretty fast. So, fun deck to use, sure. I wouldn't say um, it's good for ranks. I've used him in rank before. I've won quite a bit. Don't know how many times I've won him ranked. Let me check. Uh... Oh, 63 out of 93. So not that good. But then again, a lot of these losses would have been before I built the one-shot deck. Because this was my first Warlord. So I'm honestly not sure. Infiltration mission is better than the Custodes um, jam. So you need to always use that on this type of deck. And you always need them. Because especially how dangerous some cards can be. Like front lines... Empress Children cards that give disorientation and stuff. Ruinous Claim, you don't need this card, but I decided to have it anyway. Just in case the board is full of troops and I need precog targets. At least one wonders of Tiska, sure. Gathering Intelligence, this is high energy, sure. But you need to draw cards, definitely, for this to work. So yeah, put that in, I would say. You always need this twice on any Custodes deck. Faithful Clash, you need that. At least one of them. In case your um, opponent has front lines in play. And you, um, this fits into the combo nicely if you have Halls of Terror. So it's alright. And that's about it. Apart from these that you uh, you'll always need. To draw cards obviously in Cycle. And Command Bridge to try and get Paragon Spear. That's the deck. It's great fun to use um, in practice. I wouldn't use it in ranked, but if you want to, go ahead. I've won a few games. Just use the free crates that I get. You don't get shit from these crates. I managed to get a legendary once. I got um, the Horned Dryman. That was cool. But yeah, that's, that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed. If you want me to... Um, talk about other decks then I can do that easily this deck I was inspired by your physics teacher so just watch his video on it if you want but yeah thanks for watching and I hope um, you subscribe to watch other decks I talk about bye